I live mainly in Israel. I come here a great deal. I am British. I will always be British. Well-meaning people in Britain have got this completely the wrong way around. That's good. Cool. He says that the Gazans are being denied by Israel access to food and humanitarian supplies. Yes. This is completely untrue. There have been hundreds and hundreds of trucks going through Gaza. There have been hundreds of trucks stopped by going th from going through Gaza because the food is being stolen by Hamas. We are 10 minutes from the borders with Gaza. We have a truck full of food for the people starving in Gaza. The police and the army won't let us get in. So we are staying here. We will keep holding on until they will let us in because there is no reason to let people starve to death in Gaza. The Gazans themselves are saying this. You laugh because you don't know. I am telling you. But, but hang, hang on, Melanie, in fairness, the, the UN says that not enough trucks are being allowed in and, and that, that children are dying of salvation. You've got UNICEF saying children are dying of the salvation. UN, the UN has had its own operatives in UNRWA, the Relief and Welfare Organisation, who are members of Hamas, dozens and dozens of them. Yeah. They are entirely compromised. An Israeli strike has hit a UN aid distribution center in the southern city of Rafa, killing at least five people. The site was providing desperately needed food and other supplies to the more than a million people sheltering in the overcrowded city. The UN said at least one of its staff members was among the dead. When you've got the WHO and the UN yes. and the EU humanitarian chief saying there is famine in Gaza, you're saying that's not true. You can, go you're on, you can go on YouTube and see pictures of the stocked food markets in Gaza. Why are you laughing? Because have you it's seen outrageous. them? Have you Quite seen them? Actually, have you I, seen these Melanie, video pictures? I have looked at some of them. They don't have timestamps on them. I've got to point that out. So I don't know when these pictures were taken. OK. I mean, if you have proof that they were taken in the last... I'll just, October. I'll, I'll, if you want to look at pictures, Melanie, I'm quite happy to send you some pictures okay. and videos of the civilians the 30, being bombed I, and slaughtered I, at the hands of the I'll show you some, some videos. OK. If you, if you want to talk about slaughter, Stephen, you accuse Israel of indulging in collective punishment. You talk about... October the 7th and how abhorrent that was. These are crocodile tears by you. Your hypocrisy That's is outrageous. epic. Hamas, oh. let Melanie, me finish. Melanie, let her finish, finish and then I'll let you come back. Let me that. finish. That was merely the start. Hamas and Hezbollah have said they intend to kill every Jew and wipe out the state of Israel. If you had your way and there was a ceasefire now, there would be more pogroms and more slaughters of Israelis. The Israelis do not want to kill Palestinians in Gaza. It's the last thing they want. Hamas have made the Gazans into not just human shields, but cannon fodder. Hamas shoot Gazans when they try to find safe areas. Hamas are in tunnels for their own safety. Not one shelter has been built by Hamas in all the time they have ruled Gaza for the Palestinians under bombardment. The only reason that Israel is having to bombard Gaza is because they cannot get at the infrastructure of mass terror and genocide, which has been put underground. Collective punishment, this is how this man talks about the defence against genocide. Collective punishment is how he describes the desperate attempt by Israel to prevent a genocide from happening and a second holocaust from happening. I don't think people here understand. What do you think that Hamas mean when they say we wish to kill every Jew? What do you think they did when they slaughtered, when they slaughtered 1,200 Israelis and took others hostage with a terrible fate we don't yet know? And not only that, they say they will do it again and again, and they mean it. Why do you sneer at this? Why do you dismiss it? Why do you call the defence against mass murder collective punishment? Would you have called it collective punishment when the Allies bombed Germany? You would have said it was a defence against fascism and Nazism. Israel is trying to prevent a second Holocaust. That is not an exaggeration. That is what is threatened. You don't understand, I'm afraid. Well-meaning people here have no idea what it's like to be in Israel.
Not only is it a very small country, there is virtually not a single household that is not personally touched by this. Either they've had family or friends murdered on October 7th, they are had to be taken hostage, their boys and girls, their grandchildren, their children are on the front line and they are dying every day. There are rockets, hundreds of rockets every day coming from the north, from the Hezbollah. Okay, Melanie, Melanie, you're making your pants very powerfully. I'm just going to, because you've made some accusations against Stephen, I want to let him answer. So I know, my goodness, who'd have thought? Anyway, from Liverpool, from all of us here, until next week, bye-bye.